Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, thank you very much for coming along to the uh, public meeting this evening uh, about the potential station mergers in this area. Um, my name is Kieran Timmins, and I'm the treasurer to the Fire and Rescue Authority, uh, and I'm going to chair the session this evening. Um, I appreciate this isn't an absolutely perfect venue for this sort of presentation, or for the numbers of people who want to attend, uh, but it's uh, the best locally available, and if it went further afield, uh, people would have to travel, and uh, we wanted it to be as accessible as possible, so that's the reason for choosing the venue. In terms of housekeeping, um, the, the fire exit is just over to the side here. There are toilets in the corner of the room there, or at the, the, the back. <coughs> Uh, if I could ask you all to turn your mobile phones to silent, if you haven't done that already, I'd be grateful. Um, we've got a, a sign-up if anyone needs the service. Um, does anyone actually need the service, or, or can I stand and sue down? Was that, was that, was that yes, please? Yeah. Um, the Fire and Rescue Authority is facing very challenging decisions about how and where it reduces the service it provides as a result of funding changes. Um, the structure of tonight's session is going to be that the Chief Fire Officer, Dan Stevens, is first going to do a short presentation so that everyone has the same information and fully understands the reasons why the Fire Authority is even considering the sorts of decisions it's having to make at the moment. There's going to be plenty of time available for questions and comment. Uh, we'll manage that to try and allow everyone who wants to, uh, to have the opportunity to ask questions as we go through. But we will call a close for the event at 8.30 at the latest. Um, I'll stop there and hand over to Dan to give the presentation. Kieran, Dan, if I may just take a minute before Dan starts his presentation. For those who don't know, I'm Councillor Chris Blake, I'm one of the local councillors. Councillor Bruce Belly here, and Councillor Steve Williams is outside talking to the people who have been locked out. Can, can I have an assurance that another meeting will be held in order to accommodate these people? Because when you had the lockout at Greasby, you accommodated them with a second meeting. I'm simply asking for equality and parity for the residents I'm here to represent. And I hope you will agree to that. As ever, Chris, the uh, reason we're in here now is because uh, we sought your view as the, the councillor as to the uh, most appropriate location. But we all acknowledged at the outset that there's potential that we wouldn't be able to accommodate everyone, uh, which has proved to be the case. I, I, I stand there. I do wear. I stand by the, the comments Kevin made earlier on the issue that we wanted to address first and foremost this one of accessibility to people because you'll appreciate there are no significantly large venues in this uh, in the immediate vicinity. That, that's, uh, that isn't something we're able to uh, address right now. We didn't know, we didn't, we didn't absolutely know how many people would, uh, would attend. There is, there is two further public meetings which have been held. One is next Tuesday in Upton and then the following, uh, following Tuesday in Hoyley. Uh, I will certainly consider whether or not we're able to hold another meeting as Chris uh, requests. That's something we will learn. Uh, that is something that is something that we will certainly consider. Give us the same commitments. All do is uh, I'll make a staff and then we can give us a commitment. Yeah. Yeah. Give us a commitment to the people of Greenby. Give us a commitment. I will make a staff and then I will uh, I will address that issue at the end of the presentation. Can, can I also ask another question then? Now? As, as all these people here and the people outside, I'm assuming the vast majority are opposed to this. Yeah. Yeah. Having heard yeah. their views, having heard their views. Will you withdraw these plans, or is this simply consultation so that you can go back to the fire authority and represent their views to say they're opposed to it? Will you withdraw the plans if these people don't want them? Right, that decision, as you well know, is not mine. That's the decision for the fire. You take the report. Will you take the report that says it's not acceptable? <coughs> it'll be, uh, 
strong vote. I appreciate there are very strong and passionate views from people, but there are also people here who want to give everyone a chance. I, I want to give everyone a chance. I want to give the two hundred people outside a chance. So give us a commitment to another meeting. You can leave it and grieve me. Give it to us. I think it's best if we start with the presentation. No, it's best if we give a commitment. Why would you give a commitment? Why would you give a commitment? Just say yes. We'll have another meeting. The people outside are asking what's going to happen to them. They want their voices heard. They need a meeting. I know you're going your way. You know what's happening. Outside, we get in. I, well, I haven't been, so I will get uh, I will address the issue of another meeting at the end of the presentation. Jenny, can you put the first slide up, please? So is that okay then? I will address, like for the last time, I will address that issue at the end of the meeting. It's a public 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 meeting. Like we yes or no? For a week and we get yes or no? But ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate there are very strong feelings here, that's becoming clear already. That as we move through the presentation, some of the points and questions you're asking will probably be addressed through the process <coughs> in our case. But I think it's important that everyone has a, a fair grounding about why we're in this position and why the fire authority is even considering the, these decisions. And then there will be plenty of time to make all the questions and points that you want to. Keenan Lansley, I'm um, asking a simple question. Will the Chief Fire Officer take me forward to the Fire true. Authority recommending this site as a proposal for the merger, the closure of Ascabia and Upton, and a new fire engine site here? Or will he listen to the people and not take that report back? Simple question. Yes or no? All, you, all you've got to do with respect and politeness is give an assurance they will be taken back. I'm on committees that represent people like me, myself, disabled people, and fight against um, danger. All these people are asking is that you give an assurance that the, it will be taken back and it will be fed back to us. There's an absolute assurance that this is a proper presentation and the Fire Authority values the, the, the can you give a, a postal it's, uh, it's, what's it's, a, it's a point that's really well made and we will talk through all the different forums that are available for people to express their views as well as in the meeting tonight and we will keep an absolutely clear and transparent well, that's what the people want isn't it just a, 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 an assurance that you will take it back to, to the, whoever you've got to take it back to <coughs> the feedback to us that is basically what that can be saying that's going to be nothing different because there are as many Outside, as there are in here. There's more. There's more. There's more. There's more. I mean, you were police officers, fire officers, yes. Yeah. You, you, you must have known that the, the, the people, the demand that people were, 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 were going to lobby against this. Yeah. You, must have, you must have known that too. And had we, and had we, had we, had we, had we have moved another venue that was a distance from here, we'd have been criticised for that. No, no, that is absolutely What about over church community centre? Could you not have got that? Because that is a big venue and it's only just over there. Okay, if we can, uh, if we can make a start on the presentation. Do you want to answer to Question, please. Questions. Are you still avoiding the question? The questions that, that council is asking down there. Are you still avoiding the the yes or no answer? Just give us a yes or no answer. Well, we will. We're going to the final yeah. party, Pen by your hand down, recommending this site as what you will describe as the least worst option. Or will you listen to the people here and outside and withdraw these crazy plans now? I will say that yeah. the same yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
there are a number of options that I will share with people this evening. That's why we ought to take questions at the end. When people, when people, when people, when people are hand, I will faithfully report back the outcomes of the consultation in five years. I'll tell you what, my vote's going towards is Councillor Thank you, comment. This presentation is focused on operational matters only. This is the role of the general election. Well, I'm about to get what, I would do, what I would say, what I would say is, in the interest of officers and elected members in this room, we ought not to be discussing any issues other than matters which relate directly to the operational implications relating to the proposal. Right. And suggest you do held it after the election, so we weren't in favour. Yeah. So yeah. officers, yeah. I'm yeah. going to move on, on now. Be compromised. I'm going to move you on now with your presentation. If you choose to talk over again. me, if you choose to talk over me, then that's fine. I am going to continue now with the presentation. We will have questions at the end. Some I will assurances. answer the questions faithfully, assurances. and I will take back the views faithfully expressed in here to the Fine Rescue Authority. But what I strongly suggest is that everyone in this room takes heed of some of the options that I lay out because there are substantial public safety implications, which ultimately is the overriding issue is what we are here to talk about. And we ought not to lose sight of that. No one in this room ought ought to leave uh, lose sight of that. How often is West the, Fire and Rescue, the Fire and Rescue Services Act 2004 is primary legislation. The Fire and Rescue Services Act 2004 is the primary legislation that governs what the Fire and Rescue Authority is statutory uh, required to deliver. Part two core functions has three sections. Section seven is the statutory duty to respond to fires. Section eight is the statutory duty to respond to road traffic collisions. Section nine is the statutory duty to respond to other emergencies. Those other emergencies are determined through the Fire and Rescue Services England 2007 Emergencies Order and include <coughs> Chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear, conventional, explosive, and air uh, search and rescue, which is the rescue of persons from collapsed structures. The Fire and Rescue Authority also has the power to respond to any incident where someone may be injured, become ill, or die. The same extends to an animal or the environment. That means, for all intents and purposes, the Fire and Rescue Authority has to respond to any incident where somebody may either lose their life or be injured or die, which includes any of those incidents and anything else that is not specifically there. Can you move the slide on, please, Jack? It's important that we understand what the Fire and Rescue Authority is here to do, and more importantly, what it isn't. It is not Willborough Council, it does not make decisions over matters of planning. It has no regard for those issues, it has no powers in relation to that. The authority makes decisions solely, solely in relation to, solely in relation to operational response, public safety. The council offered the green belt. The Fire and Rescue Service National Framework. We don't believe you, Dan. The Fire and Rescue Service National Framework. We don't believe you, Dan. The Fire and Rescue Service National Framework. Is the guidance by which. You wouldn't want to buy a station by your house, would you? By where you live. It's where it is. Exactly. Right, and that. Do you know what? Right, let's just pause one second. Excuse me, can I just say something about green belts? Like. So it will be time for questions. So I just want to respond to what you said there. The NPPF states that the construction of new buildings should be regarded as inappropriate for Greenbelt land. 
So why are you proposing to build on green dot land? And if you give me the opportunity to present, and there are a number of people I can see actually nodding their head at that, I think you have had enough of being interrupted. So if you give me the opportunity to present, then I will explain to you why. Why? Deal is done. Will you shut up? No, keep up with us. Just to be clear, we are in the pre election period. This is not a political meeting. We are, we are on camera here. We are on camera. We're getting filmed. I want to make that clear. For the benefit of everyone, the purpose of this meeting is purely to consider an operational response matter for the Fire and Rescue Authority. I would ask, in the interest of everyone, can we please allow me to present? I can get through this in 15, 20 minutes, then we can take questions, because I will have undoubtedly addressed, I'm not suggesting you will agree with what I've got to say. I'm in no way trying to convince anyone. What I am stating is a matter of fact. That is all. All I ask is, you listen to what I've got to say, not in any way suggesting you need to agree with me. If you don't, that will be reported faithfully back to the Fire and Rescue Authority, as the outcomes of the Greasby consultation was. But I would ask that you take a view based on what I've just said is the responsibilities of the Fire and Rescue Authority and the wider issue of public safety because there are a number of elements in this presentation, there are some additional pieces of uh, material that I could refer to, <coughs> where I could graphically demonstrate, and probably upset quite a lot of you that in this room, I could graphically Sorry. demonstrate, and I'm not going to do that, and I'm not going to do it, however, it doesn't make it any less of a reality. This is a matter of public safety, and people need to listen to what I've got to say. But you don't need to read, read slides to us that we can see up there. Right. Please just don't read. The Fire and Rescue Service National Framework de determines that the Fire and Rescue Authority must produce an integrated risk management plan. <coughs> Within that plan, it needs to do certain things. It needs to talk about and address how it will manage risk. It does that primarily through four uh, fundamental strands. Prevention. Like prevention of fire, fire safety, protection, like protection of businesses, preparedness, training of firefighters and operational doctrine and response, how we actually respond to incidents. We have to, uh, we have to engage not just with our blue light partners but more broadly with the local authorities as well in order to develop a community risk register for all of Merseyside. Like that determines how we collectively, along with our partners, keep Merseyside safe from all of the reasonably foreseeable risks. I, as the Chief Fire Officer, am charged ultimately with the delegated responsibility for operational matters. That means it rests with me, right? which is right and proper. Right? But that's, that is absolutely fine. But that responsibility is mine ultimately. So I am held to account for the operational recommendations that I make to the Fire and Rescue Authority, which are concerned only with public safety. Jenny, you move the slide up. For a long time now, Merseyside Fire and Rescue Authority has faced quite a significant financial challenge, certainly over the last decade and more. There are legacy reasons for that, not least because the fire and rescue infrastructure across Merseyside still, to a greater or lesser extent, dates back to the 1930s when the National Standards of Fire Cover, which were repealed back in 2004, were set. And back in the 1930s, <coughs> Merseyside looked very different to what it does now, as you'll all realise. Back then, Liverpool was the second city. The hinterland of Merseyside was far more industrialised and the population was a lot more than what it is now. Back in 2004, the Fire Services Act of 1947 was repealed. It was replaced with the Fire and Rescue Services Act 2004. Along with that, the National Standards of Fire Cover went, 
and we moved to a per capita based funding. And of course, what had happened over that period of time, Merseyside's population had reduced from 1.7 million down to as low as 1.3 million, back even as far ago as a decade, so 2004. Over the last five years, Merseyside Fire and Rescue Authority has faced a 35% reduction in its grant. We also are limited by the amount that we can raise council tax by. We rely on grant for 70% of our income. So we've had a 35% reduction on 75% of our income. That clearly has quite an impact. We've had to make savings of £20 million in the last five years, and we have to make savings in this financial year now of £6.3 million. But even still, even after those efficiencies, even after the reduction in our budget, we are still the third most expensive fire and rescue service on grant alone and fifth most expensive on overall expenditure. There is and always has been a postcode lottery on fire and rescue cover in this country. It's ever been plus and it always will be so. That's just the reality. We've done very, very well all the time. We still have very fast response times. Of the savings that we've had to make this year, the 6.3 million, just under half, just under 3 million is assumed to come from what we term support services. That is, anything that's not directly related to fire stations. <coughs> very simplistic differentiation. It doesn't mean it's not frontline. That 3 million, or just under 3 million, includes some of our advocacy roles, our prevention staff, our protection staff. I've just made a very, very simple mm. differentiation. Mm. The remainder has to come from fire stations simply because there's nowhere left to take it from. That is going to cause us some very, very significant challenges to achieve that 3 million pound because we've had to make such far-reaching savings up to this point and certainly over the last five years. There's nothing left to go at now. We are at the point where, to remain viable as an organisation, we can't take a great deal more out of our support function. What I mean by that is we need to have, for example, a finance team because people need to be paid. You can't not have a finance team. It's that sort of, uh, that sort of example. Move the uh, slide on, Jim. <coughs> what that means is that £3.4 million pound needs to come from operation response or from fire stations. Expressed very simply, the number of firefighters we can afford to employ directly relates to the number of fire engines we staff, which in itself, self-evidently, directly equates to the number of fire stations in which they can be housed. It's, it's very simple. That's the... That, that is the, the, uh, the reality for us in the, the fire and rescue service. In order to make the save in the 3.4 million, we'd have to take out another 88 firefighter and senior manager posts. That will, need, that will require us to reduce our station numbers down from what was 26, 25 now, because we've closed Allerton and Liverpool on the, the 1st of April, take that down to 22 whilst at the same time we were trying to attempt to maintain 28 fire engines. 24 will be maintained whole time by firefighters physically there on the fire station, and the four that we would have lost otherwise, we will try to maintain them through firefighters taking a retained contract. So when they're off duty, ordinarily firefighters work okay, two 12-hour days, two 12-hour nights, four days off, 48 hours over an eight-day reference, 42 hours over, over seven, if you like, seven days. <coughs> Do they uh, retain contract to give us cover on the two middle days off? That's how we would uh, seek to maintain the uh, four fire engines. Last year, when we, uh, we undertook our public consultation pan side over our integrated risk management plan, which we're required to produce each year, what? We looked at a number of, uh, we offered out a number of options 
for people to consider. And they are contained within the handouts that you have there on your seats tonight. They're explained in detail, so I won't go into that now. Leave that for you to uh, leave that for you to read at your convenience. Those saving options are station mergers, which is uh, the closure of two stations to build a new station somewhere around the midpoint, which is, if I'm honest with you, nationally, probably the most favoured way. It's certainly something that a significant number of foreign rescue <coughs> authorities have undertaken, because self-evidently it's the... Uh, it, it, it is the thing to do if you can no longer afford to crew the two stations. Outright station closures is another option. That's something that we've done in Liverpool this year. Allerton Fire Station closed outright on the 1st of April. There are other some, there are other crewing changes that you can make, and I say I won't go into them in detail because the detail is in the handouts that you have there on your there on your seats. In terms of station mergers, as I say, that is certainly for Merseyside, given our geography. I, the county is relatively small in geographic terms, say if you compare us to che Cheshire or, or Lancashire, for example. The, the public and the consultation meetings recognised that mergers were going to be the least impacted, simply because they are, it's a matter of fact. Three mergers are identified to date, one of which has already been approved by the authority. That is the merger of Whiston and Highton Fire Stations in Knowsley and a new station in Prescott. There is the proposal here for West Whittle and there is also a proposal for a merger of the existing Eccleston Fire Station in St Helens with the fire station which is on Parstock Road <coughs> in St Helens just outside the town centre. As I've said previously, as I've said previously, I'll come to that. As I've said previously, Allerton closed outright on the 1st of April, Jan. The consultation process for the mergers be exactly the same as it was for Knowsley and the same as the consultation we did for Greensby, which went back to the Fire and Rescue Authority, even though Whittle Council withdrew the land for our consideration, we concluded the process and we faithfully reported back the views of everybody who had responded either in the public meetings or to our server. That was faithfully done and that was, uh, I think Mr and Mrs Blaise attended the meeting, that was filmed, that is a matter of public record. That is what we did, that is what we will do this time and that is what we will always do. And Councillor Blakely, you have my absolute undertaking, as you've always had done, that that is what we will do. To be clear, from an operational response perspective, we did not need to conduct public meetings or indeed conduct a public consultation because we've already covered the principle of a station merger through the Greensby proposal. Other fire and rescue services in the country, with the exceptional truth of ourselves, have consulted on a broad principle and never talked about a location. You can imagine how many people we got at the meetings, not many. We've never done that. We've never ever shied away from that is the proposal. The reality is, what it does do is confuse two issues. One is operational response, one is planning. It's not one and the same. There are two separate processes and you get two bites at the cherry. That is the reality. But we tried to be as open, honest and transparent as we can be. We've never hidden anything in that regard. In terms of this process, the outcome will be reported back to the Fire and Rescue Authority, the outcomes of the deliberative forums, the outcomes of the public meetings and the, uh, the survey. That will all go back to the authority, unadulterated it will be what it will be. The authority then need to make a decision. But their consideration primarily is operational response. And it is important now why I make that point, because there are other options here that I could recommend to the authority that may come out of this consultation. And I ask that you consider those, because it is very important how you respond to the consultation. And in no way am I trying to convince anyone that they should support us building a fire station anywhere. I get the fact completely. It's not the fact that a fire station could be anything. I understand that completely. I get that. I get it completely. 
was up to the table. That, that, I assure you, was not staged. It was not staged. But I, serves the point, I'll have to come up here, whatever happens. In terms of the programme of mergers itself, we submitted the bid last year for the capital allocations for this year, capital funding being war funding, not our revenue, not the revenue funding that we get each year, right? one-off capital funding for what's termed the Transformation and Efficiencies Fund. And we were successful in that bid for match funding to fund the mergers programme, if indeed that is what goes ahead. One station thus far will be built under the merger pro their program that's over in Pascoff. That's been approved. <coughs> Any balance would be met from reserves. The reason to make that point is the authority, if the mergers go ahead, will not incur any additional debt repayment from the merger program because that would increase our revenue expenditure. We're not going to do that. What we're going to do, if it goes ahead, is pay outright from reserves and from this funding for the stations. That's what we will do. Any merger is going to take at least two years to deliver. The authority approved the, uh, the, the Prescott merger in Nosley on the 2nd of October. We are still not in a position of seeking pre-application or pre-planning application advice because we still have to firm up the designs because we have police and ambulance colleagues who wish to join us in that site. These things take a long, long time. And what happens in the meanwhile is, what happens in the meanwhile, because we are dealing with further in-year financial challenges, we cannot recruit people to replace the people who are leaving. So what happens is, as time goes on, bear in mind, if we're lucky, we'll get a new station in Prescott by the end of 2016. In the meanwhile, more and more people leave the organisation and with the best will in the world I can't magic people up out of nowhere to staff fire engines. We only have the budget now to staff 24 whole time fire engines, not 28 as our structure still, sorry 27 because Allerton's gone, not 27 that our structure assumes. So what that means is the fire stations that remain in certain areas are not in the right place because certain stations we can't clear. If they're not key stations, we can't always clear them. That is a reality. That situation will get worse, which is why we're here now conducting this consultation, because we need to move on and get a resolution one way or the other, because we need to address these issues so structurally. And I'll come to that. I'll come to that in a second. I'll come to that in a second. The closures. When you close a station, right, that is much, much easier, believe me. At Allerton, the public meetings for Allerton, we had two. I had 20 people at the first, and there was a national fire strike on at the time. It was pretty much all firefighters who, who, were, who were on strike who came to the meeting. The second meeting, there was eight people there. Two of them were Beatles fans who had no interest at all in the operational response implications. And we're only concerned at the fact that the fire station supposedly features in the song Penny Lane. Much, much easier, much, much easier to close a fire station, unfortunately, than it is to build one. We get that. We understand that. Right? We do understand that. But it is not necessarily the right operational decision. In terms of the West Wirral merger, right, we have two fire stations on West Wirral. We have Upton and we've got West Kirby. Is there anything coming out of the We've got Upton and West Kirby. West Kirby's closed. Oh, it's not closed. West yeah, Kirby is not closed. Now, is West closed? Kirby is on the run about 70% of occasions at this time. That number will reduce as time goes on for the reasons that are said because I can't magic people up out of nowhere. Because we can't replace people as they leave, because we need to reduce our numbers to make the savings. That is the economic reality. So the longer this goes on and doesn't get resolved, the longer that situation is in effect. 
Now I need to do something about that, and so does the Fire and Rescue Authority, whatever that may be. In the ideal world, you would move to the midpoint in between the two fire stations. And I'll show you in a couple of slides as we move through the presentation. We're not far off now, we're not, I haven't got too much longer to go. The yeah. midpoint, the exact midpoint, is there or thereabouts, three lanes end, which is about 600 metres down the road towards West Kirby. You wouldn't go any further beyond that, because if you think the reason why West Kirby is not the key station in Upton is, because if you draw a 10 minute travel isochrone around West Kirby, that covers as much as the River Dee as it does of the Wirral. You cover 10 minutes around Upton covers more of the Wirral. That's the reality. Right? That's why it's the key station and not West Kirby. That would be, that would be obvious to anyone. The only operationally viable non-green belt site was the Greasby Library, which is the reason that Wirral initially offered that up for consideration. That was subsequently withdrawn, and what Wirral then did is offer us for consideration the site at Solomassey Road. And who offered it? Who offered it? The council? In, in conversation, like, bear in mind, Wirral is a Category 1 responder under the Civil Contingencies Act. Take you back to the comments that I made right at the beginning. Wirral has a duty around community safety in the same way as we do. And for reasons which I will demonstrate in a minute, response times do matter, therefore Wirral cannot, cannot disregard that. It's not something they consider in, in exclusivity. A planning committee would consider all of the issues I'm sure the gentleman will quite legitimately raise over there. Not disputing that for one second. You then weigh up community safety versus green belt, which is fine. It's not the Fire and Rescue Authority's decision to make. That is the decision of Will, because they, they have the statutory responsibilities in that regard. Solo Massey Road, the piece of land, which I'll show you on a map in a second, is in Whittle's ownership. I have written to Whittle to ask that they consider transferring the land to us. That decision has not been made. That decision will not be made until the end of the consultation process. We have approached other landowners in the vicinity of Three, lane, uh, three Lanes End. We haven't had any response. We do not have any power to compulsory purchase land. Therefore, we have what we have available for, pardon me, for consideration, nothing more. But we are consulting, being specific about a location. What we could have done right at the very beginning is say we'll have a pan side consultation and then the principles emerges. That would have discharged our responsibility in relation to consultation. We are a pan side organisation. This does not in the broad sense, affect response times around the targets. I will explain very clearly the difference between the arbitrary 10 minute response standard and the actual reality. I will come on and explain that. The principle of merger is well established across the country. Lots of fire and rescue services have pursued this option. Merseyside has done as recently as 15 years ago the old Connage Road station in Speak was merged with the Banks Road station in Garston to give us a new station by Liverpool Airport. These things have been done before. In terms of the merger option, right, what does it save us? Currently we have two fire stations, West has 24 firefighters, Upton has 24 firefighters established on the budget. Well, that's not strictly true actually. The first, uh, before the first of April it did. Thereafter it doesn't now, clearly because the, uh, that money has, has gone out of our budget. So, 24-24. You move to a station in the middle, you have 24. You save 24 posts. Of £860,000, £870,000. Which makes the contribution, when you do that four times, that's what delivers about £3.4 million pound saving that we need to deliver, that we have to deliver because we can't take it from anywhere else and you can't spend what you haven't got. In the event that this merger goes ahead, 
In the event this merger goes ahead, we would sell the sites at Upton and West Kirby, and those, uh, the income that we received would go towards the, the grant that we've got off the government, the one-off funding, which, backed up with our reserves, would pay for a new fire station. So there would be no additional revenue cost, as I explained previously. As it stands, as it stands, as it stands, ladies and gentlemen, you've been very patient so far. There's not long to go in the presentation. If you just wait till the end, everyone will have the chance to make their, ask their questions and make their points. Thank you. Right. As it stands, the proposal here is that we close up to the West Kirby and we build a new station in the midpoint. The only land that we have available for consideration right now is the land that's all the mass and gold. That's it. That is the only land we have available because we don't have compulsory purchase powers to purchase any other land. But the, the, alternative, the alternative to the merger as it stands, and here's the thing, is the outright closure of West Kirby because that is not the key station. So you'd have to protect Upton ahead of West Kirby for the reasons I said earlier on. However, what I will do, I heard the comment there and do that. So we'll come to that. Sorry. What I, uh, and, and we got similar comments in the news I think it is important now that I make a real important point for you to take on board. Because what could happen is if the outcome of the public consultation is unanimously, we don't want a fire station, but you recognise the operational principle of the merger, then that's, that's, that's a planning issue. Ultimately, that's a planning issue. However, if it is, we don't want a new fire, we don't want a new fire station, we don't care about response times. But I'll be honest with you, that does put us in a, uh, that's a slightly different dynamic, because I will faithfully report that back to the Fire and Rescue Authority. And what the authority might look at is, they, well, people in West Wirral don't really care about response times. Now we're going to go through, we're going to go through, like all I'm, I'm making a comment, I am making a comment based on returns, returns thus far, matter of record, returns made thus far, where people have made that very comment. We don't care about response times. Well, we that comment has been made. And that's, and that's fine. And that's fine. Please, please yeah. indulge me. Let me explain. Let me explain. The Fire and Rescue Authority then, let's say that was the overriding, not suggesting from Sorbonne Massey that it will be for one second. <coughs> I am stating the fact they are comments that have been made during the Gleesby consultation. Numerous comments, I have to say. We all that is the we matter. Care. I've got three children, I live right opposite Sir Bomas. I have three children, I care. Let me, but just not if you okay, want to see where we're coming that's from. Fine. That, that's fine, and it's important, it is yeah. really important that we establish that principle. Because, let, let, me, let me just finish, and I'm not saying that anyone I've, I've presented to the Sorbonne Massey Village Conservation Area Society, we had a good discussion there. But I do need to make this point. I'm not saying for one second <coughs> that people in Sorbonne Massey take that view. What I am saying is, and it's a matter of fact, that view was expressed in, in very significant numbers during the Greasby consultation. Don't care about response times, not bothered about West Kirby, so on and so forth. That's what was said. Now, you report that back to the final, I will, faithfully, you report it back. The Fire and Rescue Authority can do one or two things. They can look at that and think, well, if people in West Wirral don't care about response times, I mean, you could argue you could shut up and keep West Kirby open, it would make the saving. It would increase response times over here. But if response times don't matter, then you see the point of making it. Or to take it to the nth degree, you could shut up and and West Kirby because less than 10% of the overall incidents that occur on Merseyside happen on the two station areas, shut boat stations, and then we don't have to do anything and say.